May I speak in the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost. Amen. There's something uncanny about a corpse. It's true. I remember the time I was walking through one of the major cemeteries in Buenos Aires, Argentina. And though I had seen a dead body before and I'd been in the presence of a corpse, I'd never been particularly unsettled until as I walked through that cemetery, I could see the coffins stacked one on top of each other through the open great work on some of the old tombs. It kind of freaked me out. I found myself walking faster and faster, just wanting to get out of the cemetery. There's something uncanny about a corpse. That story is sort of funny in light of the fact that now I practically live in a cemetery. For those of you who know the layout of the Christchurch campus, the rectory is right against the churchyard. Why do we feel that way in the presence of the dead? I always think of Ezekiel being placed down there in the valley of the dry bones and speaking to them, commanding them, prophesying to them that sinews and flesh and skin might come upon them, but the breath was not in them. And in that moment, Ezekiel was standing in a valley filled with lifeless corpses. How weird. How scary. How awful. There's something uncanny about a corpse. I think it's because when we look at a human being, we look at a creature made in the image of God, a creature intended by God for life. And when we see that the breath of life has departed from that image-bearing creature, we see that something is not right. Something has not gone according to plan. Something is wrong. Something is uncanny. John chapter 11 shows Jesus' own encounter with a corpse. His own encounter not simply with the dead body of his friend Lazarus, but with death itself. We see Jesus moved in his guts. None of our translations render the Greek effectively enough. He is grieved in his core as he stands at the tomb of his friend and he weeps. He's not just lamenting the loss of one person that he loves. He's not just lamenting this one death. He's lamenting death with a capital D. This destructive force that mars the image of God implanted in human beings and takes away the breath of life, the very spirit of God blowing in and through us. There's something uncanny about a corpse, and Jesus himself shudders in the presence of death. There's fear of death in spades these days. Not just fear of the physical death that might afflict any of us at any time, whether from the coronavirus or anything else. There's fear of death for our economy, fear of death of our livelihoods, of our businesses, fear of death in our communities, fear of death for our nation, and indeed of the international economic system upon which we all depend. There is great fear of death abroad in the world this day. And some of that uncanniness that we feel in the presence of a corpse, we feel when we look on silent city streets When we see photographs of empty airplane, or airports, that's the word I wanted, or train stations. When we see store shelves that are swept bare, or find that our favorite restaurants and shops and businesses are boarded up. There's something uncanny about all of this, something strange and unsettling, and we may well react in the same way that Jesus reacted at the tomb of his friend Lazarus. It's okay for us to weep in these moments. 
whether actually shedding tears over what we have lost or finding a sort of internal grieving, gnawing away at our core. Acknowledge that feeling. Recognize that it's there. We live in uncanny times. And here in the presence of corpses, literal and metaphorical, we find ourselves unsettled and upset. We have to say those words out loud. Jesus was not afraid to weep at the tomb of Lazarus, and neither should we be afraid to grieve for what we feel we have lost. But of course, the corpses we meet in our scripture passages today are not left dead. The corpses we meet in our scripture passages today find new life coursing through them, calling them up from their graves, from their tombs, from the places where they sit languishing and lamenting their own loss of life. The corpses we meet in our scripture passages today may be uncanny, but they do not remain corpses when they have encountered the power of the living God. I'm not saying that God is going to revive our economy so that we won't be afraid. I'm not saying that God is going to make everything go back to normal. I'm not saying that God is going to raise the dead. It's within his power. But the purpose of the scripture passage of these passages we've heard today is not to leave us waiting and watching and wondering whether he will act, but to see instead that he has already acted. To see instead that he has already engaged death itself. While we may still face it, we need not fear it. Whatever form it takes, whatever precious things it removes from us, death has no more dominion over us. You see, the battle that began when Ezekiel spoke to those bones and declared God's power to bring Israel up out of their graves and to bring life back to dry, dead bones, that battle was continued when Jesus stood before the tomb of Lazarus and said in a loud voice, Lazarus, come out, and the dead man obeyed him. That battle was completed when Jesus went up the hill of Calvary and offered himself for the sins of the world for the life of the world. And in giving his life, conquered death forever. There's something uncanny about a corpse. But we are not called to grieve over loss as those without hope might grieve. For we know that because Jesus has died and is risen, because Jesus was a corpse and is now raised, we may not fear. We need not weep. We may acknowledge the anxiety we feel, the uncanniness that it causes for us, and then we may put our trust in the living Lord who calls us up out of our tombs, calls us out of our graves, and gives us his life. Thanks be to God, who has given us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And now may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost be upon you and remain with you always. Amen.